What's going on guys? Corey Smith here at CoreFX bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is August 26th, 2018. It is Sunday, the week before um, trading starts here, the final week of August, final week of the summer. Things should be starting to pick up here. Um, anybody who's new to these videos, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the technical analysis charts of the foreign currency markets. I go over all of the major indexes for the major seven currency pairs that we trade here with CoreFX. I also dive into the Euro, I mean the US dollar major crosses, so all the seven pairs crossed up against the dollar. And then I go dive into my watch list for the week, pairs I'll be watching, trending pairs that I will be looking for setups on. Um, I touch a little bit on gold, S&P 500, and the oil pricing charts as well. Um, I appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in these videos. Any of my returning viewers, I really appreciate it. Got a lot of feedback from you guys that you really enjoy watching these videos. That means a lot. It takes a lot of time out of my weekend to do these, so I really hope it's worth it. Um, I do it for you guys, so I really hope you guys get stuff out of it and find a value in it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and hop into the charts here, guys. Uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in again. Make sure you check out the website, corefxtrading.com. we got a really new um, technical analysis group going on. We've been doing a free trial here in August, the CoreFX technical training room. Basically, myself and my partner share trading setups throughout the week, as well as we do a weekly webinar every week live covering the markets and we also have a video library that is going to be expanding with educational content it is free through september 1st then it's going to turn into 50 dollars a month 300 dollars a year um, if you want to do a yearly option but again guys reach out to me if you have any questions about any of this stuff corey at corefxtrading.com and uh, i really appreciate you guys tuning in i'm gonna go ahead and hop into the charts now for you thank you very much and i'll see you in there Alrighty, so jumping into the charts here, um, we're going to start with the indexes, starting with the U.S. dollar Dixie index. So today is, again, um, October, August 26th, 2018. It's coming to the end of the month. We have the last week of August coming up this week. And switching it over real quick to the calendar here, you guys can see we have a pretty slow week in terms of fundamentals. So we had nothing going on Sunday, essentially nothing on Monday. Tuesday, we have consumer confidence out of the U.S., minimal news event. Um, Wednesday, we do have preliminary GDP, which is a pretty strong GDP reading. We have business confidence out of New Zealand, um, private capital expenditures out of Australia. So we might have some trading opportunities around this. CAD GDP Thursday, some CPI numbers in here in Europe. Um, and then essentially the rest of the week, we don't really have much of anything. We have CPI out of Europe on Friday, but um, you know this is the flash estimate. So we don't really have much going on in terms of news. It's the last week of the summer. It really is, there's really no reason to be trading a lot this week. For anybody who, who is like impatient and, and wants to trade as much as they can because they think they want to make as much money as they can, this is one of those weeks I recommend you either take off, put your charts away for the week, and really just, just do something else, study. Take, take time re reviewing the last month, two months of your trade, seeing what you could have done better, what you could have done worse, or what you did wrong. Um, just go back and look into things, study, go go to the gym, go on vacation, do whatever you can if, if you have that problem this week. This is one of those weeks I recommend don't trade if you have problems with impatience and over trading because this is going to be one of those trading weeks that um, there's really not going to be that great of moves and fundamentals really drive price even though technicals guide it and technicals are the main thing we want to be watching. If there's not a lot going on fundamentally, then there's really not going to be much pushing price. So um, this week, we really want to be careful. We really want to, obviously, we only ever want to take the perfect setups, but this week, we want to be especially particularly picky. As you guys can see, the following week after that, um, first week of the month, you can see red all across the board. We got NFP, employment at a CAD. We've got all kinds of stuff going on. We got rate statements. We got rate statements. We got retail sales. We got all kinds of stuff. So that's going to be a great opportunity that week. This week, we want to just keep an eye on things and look for setups developing for the next week. And if we see a good setup, you know, maybe around these events, we trade something. Or if we see the perfect setup on our plan, maybe we take a smaller risk trade. But this week, we really want to be careful with our trades. It's the end of the low volume, slow moving summer. Things are going to get much, much better moving into September. So just please don't force things this week. Don't give back the returns that you've been making the past couple weeks. Um, preserving your capital is one of the most important things you can do in trading. And weeks like this are one of the weeks you want to really focus on that. All right, so starting with the Dixie U.S. dollar index. This is the U.S. dollar um, bundled against a group of all the other currency pairs. As you guys can see, 
Um, we were in this ascending triangle, right? We had that breakout. We were looking for a pullback, retest, maybe this resistance turn support level and push higher. It did actually break right through that 95.50, but it held again on this very strong support we have with this red daily support level um, of 95. You can see 95 in the past was a very strong resistance. It broke out and then pulled back, and now it's a support. We did get a morning star pattern, right? We had a, a little bit of a bearish candle, small indecision spinning top, bullish engulfing. This is a nice little morning star pattern. It's a, it's a bullish reversal continuation pattern. Um, but then on Friday, we did have this strong bearish reversal right after. It didn't quite engulf the candle. As you can see, it did pull back off the lows of the day and close right about even with it. And as long as we are above that 95 support, I am still bullish the US dollar. So we want to see the dollar come up and break above these daily highs of these two close candles right here, these little railroad candles. But as long as this 50 SMA right on 95 support holds, I am still bullish. We have this nice daily trend line that's coming here. We have this 50 SMA. We have this 95 support. We have a nice little um, supply level from this push higher. So all in all, we are still bullish the US dollar. And until this level gets broken to the downside, I'm going to hold that bullishness true. We have this structure holding as well. So we had higher high tested here, pulled back a little for this higher low set, right? Price at a higher high, pulled back to retest this higher low. So price is still above the support, above the zone that I'm watching. And I am definitely still bullish on the US dollar until this support is broken. Euro, we had this descending triangle. Again, guys, the Euro and the dollar indexes are gonna look pretty much exactly opposite each other. The Euro dollar is the most heavily traded pair in Forex. It makes up at least 60% of the volume in all of Forex trading. And obviously that means these are gonna be inversely related their charts. So what the dollar is doing is going to be inverse to what the euro is doing because they're pinned against each other, right? So when you're buying the euro dollar, you're buying the, do the euro versus the US dollar. So um, what this is showing us is the euro's chart, which looks pretty identical to the opposite of the dollar. We had a descending triangle, price broke, set a lower low, pulled back. We were thinking maybe we'd get a retest on here. That'd be ideal. And then it would reverse and continue lower. But it did break above that 111 resistance here. Again, we are still testing this 50 SMA. We have the overhead trend line here, and we have um, really a strong zone all through this 111 to 112 region that we want to watch. So as long as this holds, I am still short bias on the euro. Um, if this breaks up above this trend line and 50 SMA, that will call for a change in view. You know, we don't want to be anchored to any one belief. We want to constantly be able to adapt our beliefs, adapt our views, and not get too anchored to any one analysis. So this is where we stand to start the week with a bearish bias, but this could very easily change. Japanese yen, another one. We had a lower low formed, waiting for it to pull back, expecting it to push lower, but it's been slowly climbing since. We did just get, though, a break of this strong support with this gray box and a break of this trend line, counter trend line. So we were moving into a downtrend and then we pulled back. The trend was being tested when we broke this 50 SMA. 200 SMA held, 87 resistance held, price has sold off. We're now back below the 20 and 50 SMAs. So I do think the yen can move back down to around 90, uh, 84, 50 level down here. So this is something I will be watching. Yen shorts to start the week. This could bounce off of this um, 86 level here and continue this upward move. But I think with this break of this counter trend line, break of the support and break of these SMAs, I do think that we are looking more bearish than anything now with the yen. Pound is still respecting price action as we had anticipated. So this week we had this push higher to create this lower high as we were anticipating. Just barely came up to tap this structure here. A little bit short, but came up here. Um, and now we look like we are ready to continue to roll over back down to the downside with this pound. So we will be watching for shorts with the pound. If we are able to come up here and break 126 structure, that would probably have us breaking the 50 SMA by the time it catches up. That will be reversing our outlook and making us look elsewhere. But for now, we are looking to the downside with the British pound as well. Canadian dollar. Um, this looks like a busy chart here. Just want to explain what we have going on. So um, we did break to the downside and we started moving higher. We have a little bit of a wedge pattern, right? A rising wedge, which is a bearish continuation pattern. However, we have broken structure. We have broken SMAs. We have turned into what is an up of trend. But um, you can see this very strong resistance at 96 we have here, psychological level. 
Also, 50% Fibonacci from this strong move downward, and we have a could be a double top forming off of this. So we really just have a mixed bag here. Um, this double top could hold on this 50 SMA. We could see this resistance hold and break this trend line and move to the downside. But at the same time, we are in a short-term uptrend, right? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, retesting higher high. What we'd want to be watching for now is a break to the upside. What we could play is either a breakout of this level. We, we have buy stops up here and long it on this break. Or we could play a break, pull back, retest. Now we go long, play the next push. Or, you know, we could play a break of, um, for the short side, we could play a break of this trend line. We could play a break of the neckline of the um, double top. We could play the formation of this second double top with a tight stop loss. Really um, not the best probability, but with a small risk large reward potential a number of different ways to trade this but we have a mixed bag here with the canadian dollar and we really just want to see what price action does this week to give us an idea where price is going to be heading swiss franc we told you guys last week in this descending triangle price was really just chopping around for so long it could have gone either way we had a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders here and we did break out to the upside this week so um, this downward break is now off the table and we broke up above, broke this descending trend line, now above the SMAs, 20 crossed above the 50, price made a nice push higher. So now what we wanna be looking at a setup like this is for price to pull back, come back down to around this support level, 94.50 around even, and then maybe we long it here and try to catch the next move of this. So this is an early phase of a trend reversal, right? We've been in a downtrend, then we were in consolidation right here, and now we've broken out. We've broken structure, broken SMAs, pushed higher. So now what we wanna do, when trends reverse early on, when trends start in the opposite direction, we have strong moves off the beginning, right? Just taking it into Elliott wave, for example, you have wave one, wave two, and then wave three is the biggest and strongest, right? That is going to be after we have confirmation that, okay, a, wave, a trend has reversed, started the first leg, we get that first pullback, now leg three is what we wanna be riding, right? So. Um, this is the first phase. This broke out. Now, this could continue up higher. This could continue up to 200 SMA. This could continue up higher before pulling back. But what we want to be watching for now is when it price pulls back to then try to catch that next move higher, that next aggressive impulse leg to the upside. Aussie has been respecting our price action pretty nicely. Um, we came down, set this lower low, price pulled back, retested up here on the trend line, on the 50 SMA, on structure looking left and then did push lower again, did bounce immediately, but I am still for sure bearish on this. I would use 74 as my resistance to remain bearish. So for right now, if we stay below 74, um, the 73.50 range, I'm still looking for shorts on this pair. I think we can at least come back down to 72.50 and potentially even catch the next lower low, um, leg lower. Switching over now to the New Zealand dollar. Um, as you guys can see here on this daily chart, we broke a few weeks ago. Oh no, this is the weekly chart, sorry. We broke a few weeks ago out of this strong weekly range we we're in here, right? So we had a strong weekly range in here and we broke out of that a few weeks ago. And then we had a strong push lower three weeks ago and we've had a slight two week rally since. Taking to the daily chart, you can see this a little better, right? We've been in a nice lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Set this lower low, rallied back up to retest perfectly on structure. You can see this little um, shooting star rejection candle we got here, right on structure. And this turned into an evening star pattern, bullish candle, um, bearish reversal, bearish engulfing after. We did get a strong bullish candle here on Friday after that, but I am definitely still bearish on New Zealand dollar, especially staying below this 68 level. As you can see, looking left, this 68 is a very significant level. And as long as we stay below that, I am certainly staying more bearish New Zealand dollar than anything. All right. So this switches us over now to the major pairs, starting with the Euro US dollar. A little bit of funky price action going on here. Um, we were in this uh, pennant pattern, as you guys know, we broke out, caught some nice shorts to the downside, bounced off this 113 support, rallied, thought we could have come up to in here and reversed around this 115 level, but price did continue through that. Now we've hit the 50 SMA and we're looking again for another shorting opportunity. We have a nice demand zone created here that price is hitting and testing, <gasps> breaking through here on Friday, excuse me. But this trend line over top um, is still holding. So as long as that's still holding, 
<clears throat> we are still looking for shorts. The 50 SMA is still holding. So I do think we still have some potential for this pair to roll over. Switching to the four hour chart, you know, you could throw a little counter trend line on here for confirmation to give us a little bit of an idea of, um, you know, where we could look for confirmation for this to go short. Not the best setup. We have a lot of strong bullish momentum bounce off this support down here, but we are back into this very strong resistance support turn resistance level up here. So shorts are definitely still on the table for euro dollar. Pound dollar, uh, another one that's still really respecting this um, structure. As you can see, we've been in a series of lower lows and lower highs. Price has just been falling. Broke this support, came down to the lower low, hit this blue weekly level down here, rallied. We did get a um, little bit of an evening star pattern here. Just barely came up to not quite tap prior structure. Um, started to sell off. So this would be good opportunity for shorts, but since we're kind of not in the best risk to reward ratio, um, you know, you could have shorts at the break of this to the downside. Target would be down here. Stop would be maybe up above here. You got one to one at best risk to reward ratio. So really not looking for any trades on pound dollar, but I would say more short than anything if I were to pick a direction. Dollar CAD, another bit of a mixed bag here. Um, so we're testing this daily trend line, temporarily broke it, but then bounced strong off of it. Bounced strong off this dollar thirty support here. We are still in a bit of a falling wedge, which is a bullish continuation pattern. However, price has you know reversed this trend. We are now in a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. I would be waiting for a break to the downside of this gray box for shorting opportunities. Right. So um, for longs, if you're looking for long opportunities, I would wait for this red resistance and upward trend line to break here. But if we're looking for shorting opportunities, I would definitely just be looking for breakouts or breakout pullback retests of this support level there. All right. Dollar yen. Uh, another one, not the best price action lately, but you can see this daily trend line was broken with this strong bullish move here on Thursday. We had a nice bullish week all in all for the dollar yen. Um, yen got crushed. We, we are in a risk on environment. I'll show you guys that at the end here when we go over the S&P 500. But um, as you guys can see, we have come and broken up above this strong resistance, broke this trend line. So I do think there is potential for the yen now to continue higher. We're up above the 50 and the 20 SMA. Um, price looks like it's starting to reverse, starting to push higher. This 200 SMA bounced price pretty strong off of it. So I wouldn't go ahead and jump in for a buy immediately, but I would be looking for something like this. Um, you see we broke this trend line, four hour pushed up higher. I do think maybe a little bit more of a pullback is in store, somewhere around here, and then look for that long opportunity to the upside. Um, but definitely looking more so on the buy side for dollar yen. Dollar Swiss franc, I do like this pair. Another one very similar to what I just showed you with the Swiss francs index. We were in an uptrend, then we had a strong consolidation for a while and price finally broke out, right? 20 cross below the 50, they're starting to slope downward. Price broke structure, set a new structure, lower low, right? Broke all this structure in the past and set a new lower low. So what do we want now? Price to pull back up, set a lower high, look for opportunities to get long there and catch the next leg lower. So again, taking it to the Elliott Wave analysis, we've got leg one, two, three is what we wanna catch, right? So this is what we'll be looking for here on the dollar Swiss. Again, this week might not have the opportunity set up for us, but if we get a little bit of a bounce up to here, then maybe for that GDP report out of the US, we catch a short off of that and it continues to the downside. Um, a short would be a nice setup for a soft GDP report because for one, that would create less demand for the US dollar, the dollar would fall in value, but also the Swiss franc is a risk off currency, just like the Japanese yen. It's a safe haven currency. When there are things that make um, investors in the country and in the world um, less confident in their investments. They take them from riskier investments like the stock market and they take them and put them into safe haven assets like gold, like Swiss franc, like Japanese yen. And when you have a bad GDP report, which is our gross domestic product, which is a strong economic indicator for the growth of an economy, when you have a report like that that misses, especially out of the biggest economy in the, in the world, the United States, that typically will see a risk off move in the markets. So people will get temporarily um, more of a you know, higher risk in the environment, in the investing environment kind of outlook, and they'll take their money temporarily out of 
the shorter term riskier assets like stocks like New Zealand dollar Australian dollar Canadian dollar higher risk currencies and they'll put them into the safer haven currencies like the Swiss franc so a miss on the US dollar um, GDP report could cause a weaker dollar as well at the same time a stronger Swiss franc which is a pairs trade in Forex we want to pair weak with strong and that would be an ideal setup for this pair so that's something I'll be watching later on in the week dollar Swiss franc as you can see I have a red flag on it right here Aussie dollar um, this was a trade that we called out here in the in the technical group as you guys can see it was a beautiful short came all the way down took profits down here now these these trades not always are going to come and hit our exact take profit and that's where a lot of our um, for one if you're in the technical group stay on top of the alerts the alerts will be a lot more once we're live a lot more precise with when we are doing what we are doing um, but also you know this is something that comes with trading experience and come with having an exact plan in place of knowing when to take your profits off the table that's why we also have take profit one and two right so we'll have a take profit in this area where we'll take partial profits off the table so that even if it does turn around and go against us we get stopped off at break even we took some profits off the table we took advantage of the move when we were right and then we have a second take profit where we let prices ride or maybe your second take profit is just a trailing stop of some sort maybe it's a fixed pip percentage maybe it's the 20 sma maybe it's um you know a parabolic star a number of different things you can have but um this was a trade we called out this week not looking for any trades this week at this point um, we could look for you know another shorting opportunity if this 7350 level holds but as of right now we caught that trade last week moving on to other pairs not looking for anything there right now New Zealand dollar US dollar another one that we called out here in the group as you can see it did break out it did start to move down nicely it did hit our take profit one level um, which was in this region here but then it did turn around and reverse so this would have been a take profit one hit take second half position stopped out of break even right so this is another pair that we had called out um, this is a pair I'm definitely still watching we could see this pair come up form a double top here on this level and then continue to the downside again right so as long as we stay below this 6720 resistance as you can see in this gray box as long as we stay below this gray box level here I am definitely still short this pair we did see a bounce and turn around here on Friday but I am definitely still looking short on this pair uh, moving forward. This takes us into my watch list now for this week. That covered all the dollar pairs. So the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, we did see some strong bullish momentum here on Friday. This again attests to this risk on environment we've had in the markets. US stock markets are flirting with all time highs and that is causing things like the Aussie New Zealand to be stronger and things like the yen Swiss franc to be weaker right so that's what this move was here we'll be definitely keeping an eye though this week there's been a lot going on with the White House administration um, and there's some things going on that we could see some risk off return in the markets however um, we we don't want to I'm looking for shorts on this pair right we're in a nice downtrend this price set a strong lower low pulled back to set a lower high so now we are looking for shorting opportunities but I'm not just going to short because we're in this gray box I'm not just going to short because there's a pullback I'm not just going to short because we're hitting resistance we need confirmation I have an exact strategy I follow and I need that to play out so we could throw a Fibonacci level on here we can see that this level lines up with a 50 SMA I mean a 50 Fibonacci we can see um, the 618s up here which is slightly above this box but the 618s up here um, what I would like to see happen here is I would like to see a bearish reversal pattern form here on Sunday Monday maybe a shooting star maybe um, you know price gaps down here and closes below this engulfing this bullish candle here and engulfs it um, whatever it may be I want to see the daily candle close show us that this zone is being rejected I can't just short into strong bullish momentum like this that is not a, an ideal trade setup so i'm going to be looking for confirmation of this turning over also you could be looking for um counter trend line breaks right so now price holds comes down breaks this counter trend line that could be your your factor to get in either way we need confirmation we need something telling us okay price isn't just going to blow through this and reverse this trend price looks like it's holding and the trend looks like it might continue to the downside aussie yen another somewhat similar setup um we had this lower low formed we had this pullback it looked like with this bearish engulfing we could have rolled over but again this 
risk on movement on Friday had the Aussie stronger, yen weaker, which caused this bullish engulfing now to continue higher. So what I'll be looking for is price to continue to move up, and this black zone I have up here is where I'll be looking for short opportunities. That's where we'll be looking for something to tell us, um, to give us confirmation that price is rejecting this zone and ready to continue the downtrend lower, right? So we're going to look be patient with this pair, wait for it to come back up. It'll probably be hitting the 50 SMA and this trend line when we get up to the zone, and then we'll look for a nice shorting opportunity to catch the Aussie yen to the downside if opportunity presents itself. Pound yen, really good setup I like this week. This is one of my favorites going into the week. So you can see this very strong bearish push lower caused this lower low. We've now had a multiple day pullback to get this lower high. This red zone is a very strong um, reversal point. So we are looking now for price to show us rejection off of this area. Again, with the counter trend line, we can break it down and try to look for some kind of a counter trend line break off this zone for confirmation for us. But we are hitting the 50 SMA. The 6118 is also, I mean, the 618 is also another Fibonacci level that we really like and we're watching for. It would be ideal as well because if you look left, we do have a lot of structure here too. So um, that would be a nice reversal point as well. And the 50 SMA would probably have caught up by then too. So I'm looking for confirmation in this area on the 50 SMA or in this area on the 618 to short this pound yen as I think this could be a great opportunity for us to um, catch this next impulse leg lower on the pound yen. Pound Swiss, another one I'm somewhat interested in looking for shorts on. Gonna have to wait and see how it plays out here on Sunday. But as you guys can see, we have a nice... Um, support here we have this hourly counter trend line we got going here that broke right this resistance held we're in a nice strong downtrend broke structure broke counter trend line we have this 200 sma as well as this support acting as a nice little sell stop area right so we could have a sell stop there the stop loss is up here because as you can see we have nice structure in this area where price if it's likely to break lower here now I think my, my call would be invalid if it came back up and broke above this support turn resistance level, right? Um, so this is an opportunity we could be looking for Sunday and Monday. Could be looking for a short here below this um, support. It's going to be the daily lows also from last week, all from the 50 SMA on the four-hour chart. Nice bearish engulfing here on the four-hour, rejecting this zone for the basically third time. So we are watching pound, Swiss, pound CAD to start the week for shorting opportunities as well. Euro New Zealand, this was a trade we took last week. I'm not looking to trade it again this week, but um, just wanted to show you guys we caught this breakout. As you can see here, we caught the nice break above resistance here. Caught this push to the upside. Um, again, another one here where trade management comes into play. You know, initial profits should have been taken off the table, and then you could have adjusted to break even, and you could still be in this trade, or maybe you got out Friday before the weekend closed. Either way, you would have been in profit on both positions if you did this. But um, this was another nice trade. We had a strong higher high made, price pulled back. We got a nice rounding bottom cup and handle type pattern here, right? Uh, price broke above this pattern. That was a nice entry for us, and price just shot up in our direction. Uh, didn't quite hit that full take profit too, but definitely was a good take profit trade definitely a good winner and something that uh, you know You can take advantage of if you're part of the core FX technical training room Euro Aussie Another pair that we will be watching um, This is another one that maybe we watch for not this coming week, but the following week I would like to see maybe a little bit more of a push before we pull back to here and then we look for longs to go up this is one of those where I don't like just one bearish pullback. Um, this, price, this pair could continue to pull back into this zone and then go long. But either way, um, I do think that we're starting to turn into more of an uptrend on this pair. And looking for longs is the only real option to trade this. Uh, not the most ideal setup. Definitely not looking to jump on this right away. But something I have in my toolbox and my watch list that I will be keeping an eye on. Euro Swiss Frank, another pair that I do somewhat like here. Uh, again, Friday's candle close, I don't like. This was a trade that we had out that we were waiting for a pending order, right? We had a sell stop below here, broke the counter trend line, was holding resistance, never triggered, never entered this trade. Um, it continued to push higher, but it is definitely still on the watch list. As you guys can see, pulled back. We are still hitting this area. The SMAs are catching up. That mean reversion is happening. Price is catching up to these SMAs. 
right on this prior structure. So um, definitely going to be looking for, again, I would like to see maybe a bearish hammer candle here. I mean, um, shooting star candle here, or maybe we see a bearish engulfing. Something needs to show me that price is reversing off this zone before I look to short it, but that is definitely another pair I am watching. New Zealand Swiss franc, another one, similar setup, nice pair I like. We had a strong lower low, price pulled back, had a nice shooting star off of this resistance 87.50 level here, and has started to move down. We did get a bearish, a bullish engulfing here on Friday, but I am still bullish. I am still bearish, I mean, on this pair. I will be watching for a break of this support here, right? So we'll be looking for a break of this support. You can have target be down here at prior structure. Stop can be up here, dictated depending on how you trade, wherever you'd want it to be. Um, that would be too big of a stop as the risk reward isn't there enough, but you could do it, you know, above this red daily level, above this prior high on this candle. Um, that's something where you got to go into your exact strategy, it's something that we cover at Core Effects, but um, this is another opportunity for a nice short if we come down and break this sell stop region here, right? Not just shorting it just because, just because, but um, if we get a good setup, maybe price comes up to here taps this area again we get this double top and then you have a double top neckline in here that we then look for confirmation of that breaking which falls right in line with my support level so um, a lot of different factors we can have see here line up but another pair that i'm certainly watching this week and cad swiss franc this is a different setup here this one i'm looking for a break to the bottom right we can see this very strong support is holding here at um this 75 40 area taking it to the four hour you can see this support zone a lot better Right, so it's a very strong level. Price has respected it multiple times. What we are looking for is a break, pullback, retest, then short it off of that. Right, so we want to see this break, price come down, pull back to this level, look for it to find resistance again, and then short it to catch that next impulse leg lower on that break of support here with a breakout trade with the Canadian dollar Swiss franc. All right, guys, so that does cover my watch list. I'm going to quickly hop into the S&P 500. As you guys can see with this bullish candle on Friday, we are testing all-time highs now with the S&P 500, top 500 uh, company stocks in the U.S. equity markets. So this is a very good gauge of the equity markets for the United States stock market. And as you guys can see, we are flirting with these all-time highs. So this is something we definitely want to watch for a break of or if price rejects and rolls over. If we get a break of this, I do think we'll see a nice pop higher. And that, again, has a direct effect on yen swiss franc aussie new zealand cad dollar really everything in the fx markets it affects but mainly the yen and the swiss franc um again if this breaks higher that has an inverse correlation to the yen and the swiss franc so look for them to go lower and if this reverses and breaks lower look for the money to go to the yen and the swiss franc and them to go higher um that takes us over to i'm gonna switch over here real quick that takes us over to gold Gold, again, guys, I've been calling for shorts since we broke up here on this red trend line. I've been telling you guys to short any rallies. Rally, if you shorted it, nice. Rally, if you shorted it, nice. We got another rally. Right back up to strong resistance, turn uh, support turn resistance, and a nice area again here to short it. Now, um, we have a, bear, a bullish candle here. So again, I would look for some kind of confirmation of rejection in this resistance area, but this is a great opportunity to short gold um, to the downside and try to catch that next push lower. Oil has been a little bit uh, more unpredictable. We broke below this resistance, this support level, $68 a barrel. Reversed back up. We thought we we're just retesting it, but broke back up above it again. 50 SMA is rejecting it. Um, so really in this 69 to 70 level is where we want to see if price breaks above to become bullish again And then if we see price break back below this 68 67 region here Then we can look for the bearishness to come back, but uh, oil is really not telling us any clear picture. So um, Don't have too much confidence in what to call out there But all right guys, that'll do it for this week's weekly technical talk I really appreciate it. For anybody who's not in the free trial of the CoreFX technical training room where we deliver trade alerts all throughout the week through all the trading sessions, we have this weekly webinar um, recorded, but then afterwards we turn into a webinar that we do for free every week. And also we have a video library of educational content included with this. This is the last full week of the free trial. Starting in September, it'll be $50 a month or $300 for the year to be a part of the group. Um, it's been a great, great, great trial so far. We've made a ton of pips, had some great calls in the group, and um, 
really just been enjoying having it so far. So anybody who's not in that yet, reach out to me, Corey at corefxtrading.com. Shoot me a message on Instagram, core.fx. Um, reach out to me and I'll get you into the group to try this last week free trial. But uh, I really hope you guys are getting some content out of it if you're in the group. I hope you're enjoying these videos if you're a YouTube subscriber that checks out these videos. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, thank you for tuning in again. Be careful trading this week. Not much going on. Very slow week. Last week of the month, last week of the summer. Uh, really just not the best time to be looking for setups, although we're going over a lot of trades we're looking at here. Just be really careful and only trade the perfect picks. All right, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate tuning in. I appreciate the support, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.